The problem is not feeling the fear. The problem comes when you act on it. We do it afraid. And, and that's what we really want to focus on. You're going to feel the fear, but how do yes. you act on it? Do you let it steal your joy? Do you let it steal your progress? Do you let it keep you from doing what you love? Uh, no, you don't. You feel the fear, you do it anyway. So you're going you're gonna to have uh, courage is uh, moving forward in the face of fear. And so we want you to move forward even though yes. you feel afraid. I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome back to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I'm your host, Christy Code Red, joined by the very beautiful Carrie Thompson. Oh, thank you, Christy. I'm so happy to be here and be talking about this subject. We almost uh, canceled our podcasting this morning just because both of us are jam-packed today. And uh, like Carrie's getting ready to have a yard sale and, and she's just back to back to back. And so am I. But we were like, no, this is our like one of our favorite things to do. It is. And, and... Neither of us wanted to do it on Saturday night late. We all yawning. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like yeah. okay, here's what we want to talk about. Like, we, we are better in the mornings. So let's just say, I think everybody's better in the mornings, pretty much. When I, no, no. There are some people who are not good in the mornings. Like, really? they function better at 11 to 1 a.m. Like, and I don't get that. They're those night owls, you know. And Carrie, you and I are not one of them. So we're no. definitely... We're definitely knocking this out early in the morning. And so our subject today is a good one that will resonate with so many of you. We're talking about fear. And I, I have a good definition that I heard. And I want to give credit where credit's due. I love Joyce Meyer. And I consume a lot of her content. And what I do is I take a lot of her ideas and her content and I repurpose them for you guys. I mean, there are no original ideas, but I definitely want to give credit where credit's due. And Joyce Meyer is a great teacher and a great preacher. She's been around for uh, many decades and she has inspired and influenced my life. And so she was talking about fear and I was like, no, I think I want to talk about fear because this is something that plagues our rebels, Carrie. You know, and I think it's such an interesting thing because it, it is always so much bigger in our minds than it is in actual life. And I think that if you can grasp that, then you can face your fears. And Chrissy, I have been, I'm not really a fearful person, but I've had a few times in my life when I've been pretty fearful about a few things. The definition I've heard of fear and, and, and not def definition, but, um, the, the, the acronym. So you take the word F E A R and it stands for false evidence appearing real. Yes. False evidence appearing real. And the opposite yes. of fear is faith. And, uh, you know, it's if you guys are believers, like uh, like Carrie and I, if you believe in Jesus, we love Jesus and we believe in Jesus and we believe in the Bible. And the Bible actually has three, I think that this is correct, 365 verses of fear, which seems to be one for every day. There you go. Uh, when I was in high school, Christy, um, as you know, like I'm telling you like you weren't there. I don't know what I was. <laughs> Christy, you know, my dad, well, same as your dad. Um, so when I, when I was in high school, as you recall, I had to have back surgery and I'll never forget a dear family friend, Marianne Washburn, um, knew that I was fearful because, you know, Christy growing up, as you know, nobody really had surgery. Nobody went to the doctor. Let's be honest, but I had congenital spinal stenosis and there was no way but to do a laminectomy. And back then, I mean, those were big words I didn't understand. Now I'm like, now literally it's a 45 minute procedure outpatient. Back then I was in the hospital two weeks and it was like a seven hour procedure. Um, but Marianne Washburn wrote scriptures on three by five cards about fear. And she gave them to me a big stack so I could read them. And it really helped me go through that um, experience was understanding what fear is. And the one I'll never forget is fear not for I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you up. I will lift you. I will hold you in the hand of my righteousness. And uh, like to this day, I don't want to talk about how long it's been since I was in high school. I still remember that scripture and that experience with fear. 
That's incredible. And so many people, uh, you can, you can talk, you can transfer this to er any area of your life. You know, obviously rebel weight loss and lifestyle. We are right. weight loss experts in this program, uh, not this program, this podcast, but our, our weight loss program is weight loss, but we don't always, you know, so you, of course you can talk about weight loss, but you can talk about going back to get your bachelor's degree. You can talk about raising kids. You can talk about um, it, going on a trip. And there's so many, there's so many areas of your life that fear can creep in and can rob you because we believe in God and Satan. We believe in good and evil and the, Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy. And Satan's job is to make you fearful in every area of your life. That is what he spends his day doing to make you fearful to where you won't step out. But I'm telling you, we need to start living a braver life. I agree. Christy, do you remember uh, judge Judy when yes. she would get really upset and she would go, you are a liar, sir. Yeah. You are a liar. Do you guys ba, remember ba, 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 ba. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, get, 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 get with the gavel. I'm going to get a gavel uh, yes. for staff meetings. Um, but I'm just saying that, that the, there is a scripture out there that says fear is a, there's a, there's a worship song that says fear is a liar. Fear, you are a liar. It's the same thing. It reminds me of Judge Judy. You, sir, are a liar. Get, 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 get. Carrie, you're ugly. You look fat. Nobody likes you. You can't do this program. You can't get your RN. You can't be successful in life. You can't have good kids. You can't have a good marriage. Sir, you are a liar. Get, 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 get with the gavel. That's what I think of when I think of fear coming in and trying to plague us with these thoughts and these ideas. And when the Bible talks about fear, or it, 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 the Bible is not saying that you shouldn't feel fear. Uh, you're going to feel fear. Correct. That, that is, that is the, that's the, there's nothing wrong. You're going to feel fear. The, the sin or the problem is not feeling the fear. The problem comes when you act on it. We do it afraid. And, and that's what we really want to focus on. You're going to feel the fear, but how do yes. you act on it? Do you let it steal your joy? Do you let it steal your progress? Do you let it keep you from doing what you love? Uh, no, you don't. You feel the fear, you do it anyway. So you're going to, you're going to have courage is uh, moving forward in the face of fear. And so we want you to move forward, even though yes. you feel afraid. I like the idea of embracing the monster, mm. embracing it, finding out really how big is it? Christy, I'm so scared to start Code Red. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. But when you actually turn into it and you go, it's real food, water, and sleep, well, the monster suddenly shrinks. And it doesn't, the, this fear that we've created in our mind isn't quite as big as maybe we originally thought it was. You know what I mean? Um, oh but also, Christy, have you noticed there are some people that like their fear. They want to pet their fear. They want to keep their fear around. They want to cuddle it. They want to just stroke its fur a little bit. Have you noticed that? It becomes it's a cop out a personality. It's a cop out. They yes. use fear to be like, to get out of things. Now I remember when the little, the kids were little and I had, I had legitimate anxiety and fear over, uh, <laughs> When they were little, Carrie, and I, I started thinking about what happens if they get molested? What happens if they go missing? What happens? And as a mom, you can tell me that I'm sure this goes a, a hundred times deeper than an auntie, but I would have these bouts of these panic attacks and this massive fear would come over me where I couldn't breathe. I couldn't sleep. I mean, it consumed me. And mom our mom had to pray for me because I, I was so, uh, I was so consumed with fear because, and I was just borrowing trouble. This, the kids were safe tucked in their beds and I would sp spend all night just worrying about something that would never happen. Right. And I, I do think those are very real fears as parents, but you have to say, I'm going to protect them the best I can. Um, it's like turning into it. Okay. What's the likelihood that's going to happen? pretty low when you look at the stats. Not that it's not a big deal. Please, please understand. I realize this is a very big deal. Uh, but what can I do to protect my child? Okay. You know, I teach them about the no, no zone. I teach them about people that try to do these things. I make sure that they're not in a place where they can be set up for being taken. And I mean, you can only do so much, you know, and I think having the knowledge, Christy, and knowing, Christy, they're in bed asleep, you know, that probably made you feel better. And that was before we could do videos and cell phones. And yeah, I had to call yeah. you when it was 10 cents a minute. Right. No. Oh, and we had to call in the off in the off hours with a calling card, you know, and some of you people don't know nothing, nothing about that. 
you know, and, and a lot of our moms have that mommy martyr uh, attitude that uh, that thing where they think that that's part of being a good mom is stay is making sure that you get up multiple times a night to check on your kids. And of course, that's that's cutting into their sleep, and that is making it to where moms you're unhealthy. So right. and then but they they keep doing it because they think that it is a part of being a good mom, and it's not. Oh. Chrissy, this reminds me. I just was looking. The way I'm looking over here is where my scriptures are. I have one. Ready? Psalm 94, 19. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. Mm. When anxiety was great within me. Mm. So I think that part of conquering fear is asking yourself questions like, What's the worst that could happen? Okay, because sometimes we make up these really big things in our head. Let's can we just do it for weight loss, Christy? Sure. Like, okay, I want to join a challenge. I just saw somebody post this on the 10 pound takedown. We, you guys, we have 10 pound takedowns every month. Please join us. But somebody actually, um, oh, I think I was doing a QA and they wrote, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. And now, not being a real fearful person in general, that was kind of a weird. Uh, thing for me to read. And I thought, what are they afraid of? You have to ask yourself, what am I actually afraid of? What am I anxious about? And then you have to ask yourself, what's the worst that's going to happen? Oh, it won't work. And you'll, you know, you'll go back to where you were. What's the best that could happen? Well, the best that could happen is you're going to be like, like that story I just listened to this morning, the podcast about Kristen and being healed from psoriatic arthritis, which by the way, was amazing. If you guys haven't listened to it, you need to. Um, and that's the best that could happen. Well, what, you know, what are, what's the reality of the situation I'm in, you know, and I think having knowledge and, and looking at the best case, the worst case, and kind of, again, just kind of turning into it and, and seeing that, like Chrissy said, it's not reality. It's not reality. I remember one time when I was boxing up in Albany, New York, and it was one of my last fights. Um, and I remember, and guys, this is boxing. So this is legit. Like, you know, like I got something to be, you know, like the, when you say what's the worst going to happen, I could die in the ring. Yeah. You know, like, so you're not remember, allowed to use that, Chrissy, when you're yeah, boxing. You right, can't right. use that technique. I don't feel fear a lot in my life, but this was one of the times I can really remember. Um, I was in my dressing room. We were the main event. It was a it was a St. Patrick's Day fight, and this girl was Irish. And so she, not only was she the hometown hero, she was Irish, and it was St. Patrick's Day, and everybody was drunk, and the whole crowd was just dying for us to come out and fight. And I was below, my dressing room was below the arena, and the people were screaming and cheering so loud, getting ready for us to go out in the, in the ring, that the, this... Um, the ceiling was actually, I could see the ceiling jolting and you're like, joking. And I remember, I remember I was filled with so much fear and I was like, Oh my gosh. And I had been in 14 pro fights at this point. Fighting was, I've been fighting for years, eight years. So I don't know what I was. So, but I was like, that whole thing got built up in my mind and like, Oh, uh, Ah, and of course the, the, the fear that was unrealistic because I'm, I'm a good fighter and I'm very equally matched with her. It just went, it went through the roof just with my own mind making it into something, you know, yes. in fact, I remember looking at the exit and saying I could actually run out of that exit and run away as fast as I can. Of course it was dead a winter in upstate New York and it's, you don't want to go running, you know, and, and out in the freezing cold, you know, and I would have been sued because you can't, we can't back out on a fighting contract. So I just had to get out there and I was so afraid. I remember the moments before you sing, mm. right? That horrible heart pounding. Like, well, I mean, talking like Christy and I grew up singing for things. So you get up to do a solo at the wedding and you think I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw mm. up a code red live last year. I was so nervous. Then the minute the very first word came out of the mic. The minute I started talking, I was completely done being nervous and I wasn't nervous for the rest of the event. Same thing with singing. I wasn't, probably when you got in the ring and actually did whatever you do, because I do it in kickboxing. It's not the same. That's all I'm saying. But uh, I bet your fear kind of went whoosh. No, it's it's always it always goes the first few seconds of a uh, the the first round is always the hardest and then but the first maybe fifteen seconds of the first round once once you get that first hit out of the way then you realize oh okay I can take this it's fine you know you got another twelve rounds of that baloney and it's fine the fear just it melts away same thing with with singing yes. So you 
couple of deep breaths. Uh, I'm always so nervous before I sing <laughs> and my heart and then my voice shakes and it's, it's cracky because I can't breathe. And, uh, and then it just goes away. Do you ever notice Christy then whenever I have those moments of being fearful and then it goes away, which again, I don't operate in fear like a lot of people and I, you don't either. So, you know, it's kind of, it's a little bit different to have us talk. We don't lead a fearful life. We will talk about some people we know that do, but, um, have you ever noticed that I get aggravated at myself because I let myself waste so much brain space mm-hmm. on being feared for, and I get mad. I'm like, Carrie, you know the song, you just sang it, you know Code Red Live, you know your rebels. Why are you so, why did you waste all that energy and all that adrenaline and all that cortisol, cortisol rush for this moment? You were going to be fine. And I'm aggravated at myself for giving in to the fear. It is a waste. And we have a, uh, we have a relative, Carrie and I have a relative who has crippling crippling fear and has wasted, and I'm going to say the word wasted, her entire life. Yeah. Wasted her entire life because she's been so controlled by fear and so controlled by anxiety that she never did anything in her life. It's, it's everything. Like sometimes she won't even cook anything on the stove because she's afraid she might leave the burner on or it's, it's stuff that is so unlikely to happen. And so she doesn't do anything because she's so controlled by fear. It's heartbreaking. Because you realize the potential that has been just kind of dampened. This awesome potential, awesome, creative, amazing, loving, intelligent person that has lived their life being scared to drive outside of a certain radius. Now, I do want to have a caveat though, because I don't want people to message us, Christy, that anxiety disorders are very real very real. Uh, We're not talking about people that have psychological disorders because of abuse and trauma. We're not, we're, we're talking about people that say, yeah, "Yeah, we're not talking about PTSD. We're not, because I don't want people to be like, Carrie and Christy aren't sensitive to mental disorders. We under, I'm, this is a different situation. This is scared to speak at your PTA meeting. This is just stuff that you can handle. This is everyday life. And we're not talking about people that walk in fear and anxiety and have horrible crippling disorders because of past things that have happened in trauma. So we're not talking about those people. So please don't write in and be like, my uncle, you know, had the, yeah, yeah, I understand. Like I'm married to somebody with PTSD. It's different. Yeah. There's a legitimate, there are legitimate anxiety disorders and fear and uh, based disorders out there that people, uh, that people uh, battle with every day. We're not making light of that. We're not acting like that's nothing. I mean, if you're, if you're afraid to bungee jump, yeah, I can see why you might be afraid to bungee jump. I mean, there's some risk there, you know, and, and that's scared walking off a platform. And I'm not talking about, I'm talking about just like going back and getting your bachelor's degree. Agree. I'm so scared. What are you scared about? Yeah. I, you know, what, joining a 10 pound takedown. I'm so scared. What are you scared about? I don't, right. I don't relate well. And I get asked this question a lot. Um, whenever I, I speak uh, in front of entrepreneurs a lot and I do a lot of uh, business podcasts and I get asked a lot, you know, what do you fear and how do you de- deal with your fears? And, and Marley said this to me the other day that she goes, maybe you can talk about, you know, I'm going to speak at her summit. And she said, maybe you can talk about how you got over your fears. And I said, Marley, I didn't have the fears. I don't, I don't live my life like that. I don't like, oh, oh, I wonder what would happen. Oh, 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 oh. I just, I have faith in the system. I have faith in my business coaches. I have faith in the Code Red team to, to be able to back up whatever I'm doing. And I have faith that the process is going to work. I mean, I, I do take a lot of risks. What if I fail? What if you don't? You're right. What if you don't? Uh, okay, Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Mm. One of my uh, strong and courageous guys, be strong and courageous. Go ahead. Sorry. Be strong and courageous. One of my rebel for lifers. Um, I just did a little snippet video in the the Facebook groups, uh, about this kind of this touched on this a lot, a little bit. And one of my rebel for lifers, one of my VIP clients, uh, they said, I've always been fearful uh, about driving at night. Uh, and um, I mean, that's legit, I think, because there's a lot of people that's hard to see at night. I know my husband right. uh, is 61 and, and he doesn't like driving at night. It just kind of has a hard time seeing and it's their deer in the road and, and some of it's legit, but it's 
keeping her from taking a night class. It's keeping her right. from being able to pick up her kids from their activities. So it's really been limiting her. This is what she shared in the group. And she said that after I listened to your video, Christy, and hopefully we'll get more people that are doing this after they listen to this podcast, she said, I took off in my car after dark and I just drove around my neighborhood and practiced. Good. Good. And, you know, we don't want you to be unsafe, but I think that there is a point when you have to just say, I'm not going to give in to these feelings. And even, yes, I'm going to be terrified. Yes, it's scary to start back to school. Yes, it's scary to, to try one more thing to help you lose weight. Yes, it's scary to look at all your debt and finally write it down on a piece of paper. Uh, yes, it's scary to make a change and do things differently. But stepping out and when you face it head on, there's something about that, like I said earlier, that it just shrinks that scary thing down and you kind of go, is that what I was afraid of? Like right there, it's sort of like, Christine, when you walk out at night into your living room and you go, ah, and you turn on the light and it's a, it's a coat on the coat rack. It's not a person. Guys, turn on the light in your life and look because it's probably just a coat on a coat rack. It's not something as scary as you think it is. Carrie, aren't you, didn't you used to be a little bit afraid of flying? And you, you <laughs> told me, you said, um, you know, I, you get things worked up in your mind and you say, oh, yeah, let my mind not get out of control. I'm fine. I've had many almost, I mean, I hate to say the word panic attacks because I've taken care of people in the emergency room with true panic attacks that cannot breathe. True panic attacks think they're having a heart attack. So I don't want to use that word lightly. Um, but what I would consider somewhat of a panic attack on planes. And I finally just said to myself, well, what are you going to do about it, Carrie? If the plane crashes or you arrive safely, it, you're still in the plane. You can't get out. I mean, it's like, it's, and I finally I came to that realization. I still get nervous, but I don't panic because there's nothing you can do. The outcome cannot be controlled by you. And I think sometimes, Christy, that fear is worsened in situations when people cannot control the outcome, when you can't control what might happen. And, and those are very strange places, but guys, you going to get your degree, you can control that outcome. You join a 10 pound takedown. You control that outcome. You get a custom program. You control that outcome. You deciding to walk your dog every single day and not be worried about, you know, like the, the thing in your neighborhood, you control that outcome. You really do. So you have way more control over your situation than you realize. You're not, you're not stuck in a little metal tube going 800 miles an hour or 30,000 feet. And I'm just saying, I'm just teasing. Yeah. <laughs> You do control, especially the, I don't understand when people say I'm, I'm afraid of joining a, joining a challenge because you control the last eight inches yes. from here to here. So it's not yes. prison. Nobody's shoving loaves of bread down your throat. So I don't know why people are so afraid. I'm just afraid. I'm afraid of failing, but you choose if you fail or not. So I, I don't, it seems very black and white to me. It, you choose whether you succeed or fail. So what are you afraid of? Because the choice is ultimately yours. It's one thing if you're afraid of a meteor hitting your house, that's something you can't control. But it's, but Correct. if it's food, you are the one feeding you. Yeah. And, and if, if the, if the outcome is uncontrollable, then you have to say to yourself, so why am I worried then? Because if it, if I can't predict the outcome, what is my energy going toward in this situation? Just like me being anxious on the plane. I got my stomach all upset. I'm queasy. I feel like I'm going to throw up. I'm sweating. So, but I'm still on the plane. I can't control that. So the, I think there are two different categories of fear, things you can control, things you can't control. The things you can control, boy, you have the ability to steer that ship. The other things you have to ask yourself, wow, is it really, is it just a coat on a, on a coat rack? You know, you have to ask yourself that you really do. And this is, these are not easy things. These are hard things in life guys. And, and I think really turning to it for me helps me understand that it's just a mirage. It's not quite as big as I thought it was. So many of you have spent your life years, decades, just going through the motions of your little safe little routine. You've lived like a hermit crab 
and you you just oh you just make sure you just oh I, I, I'm just gonna do this I'm just gonna go to this grocery store and I, I'm not gonna take my computer to the coffee shop and work you know you, you won't try anything new you're stuck in your ways you're just going through the motions of your little day you get up you let your dog out in the yard you wouldn't want to walk him because you know I just don't know that that house up there on the side um, they they might have a, oh, 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 oh you know and so you just let the dog out and then you just went you go get your little and you take your little computer and you you all these days turn into years and you've never tried anything and now you're in your 60s and life has just passed you by and you've been you've wasted a life because you're so controlled by fear that's the problem i have with those of you listening right now that you don't want to try anything new because you're so you won't you don't want to live a braver life it's time yeah. to live a braver life Amen. I agree a hundred percent. And I think that you can also influence and shape your children in this sense too. Um, so two examples come up, Chase and Anne Marie. So Chase wanted to buy a bus, Christy. Chase is my son. He is 21 and he wanted to buy a bus. And I don't mean like, uh, like a sprinter van, like a link with a stop sign. He bought a school bus. (laughs) And of course, if anybody knows a diesel engine going out in a, in a vehicle that size is super expensive. So that was my, that was Brandon. His, you know, his stepdad's only advice to him was beware of that cost. But that kid stepped out He wasn't afraid of what other people said to him. He wasn't afraid of what could go wrong. And he did his research and he is redoing this bus. They call it, it's a whole community of people called schoolies. They redo school buses into RVs. It makes me so excited that I was able to raise a kid that was fearless, not stupid or irresponsible, but fearless in his actions to go out there and have a good time. Also, this reminds me, number two, of Anne-Marie. So she needed a sport. Guys, Anne-Marie is my 10-year-old daughter. Um, And I suggested something I thought would play to her strengths, which was jujitsu. So her first day, she's got the gi on, and I probably have tied it wrong. I think that I actually put the pants on backwards. How are you supposed to know? She's shaped the same with the front and the back. She's 10. Anyway, so we got her in there, Christy, and she looks so terrified. That moment she was supposed to walk in, her eyes got really big, and I was like, have a good time, and I just shoved her in there, and I was like, see ya. But that pushing her to do stuff she's uncomfortable with. Yeah. It's more comfortable to stay home and play on your phone. Of course, it's more comfortable to not redo a school bus. Of course, it's more comfortable to not go back in your degree or to try to lose weight or to be a part of a health program. Of course, it's more comfortable, but sometimes somebody or you just need to shove yourself into the jujitsu class and shut the door and say, I'll see you later and force you force yourself into making those changes. Sometimes it just takes somebody kind of pushing you and shutting the door. You can do that with your kids. Super good for kids to try new things. Yeah. And I know that a big reason why Carrie and I and our other sister, Laura, Laura's a little different than us, just in personality and everything. But Carrie and I are very, very, very brave and we are fearless. And a big reason for that is mom and dad let us take uh, these trips to California. We were raised in the mountains of Northern Idaho and about a 24 hour drive took it to the Bay Area of California to see our relatives. And so we oh. got in twice, two different years. Carrie was 16, I was 14, and Laura was 11. And they let us take the family station wagon and drive. And remember, this was back in the 90s when we didn't have cell phones. Drive all the way to the Bay Area where dad wrote directions on a, um, yeah, he on a Yellow napkin. legal pad. Yeah, legal pad and and uh, wrote little little directions and little pictures and stuff for us. And that actually, I mean, a lot of you parents listening right now, and I've done a whole podcast on this, which was a single, one of the single biggest defining moments of my life is mom letting us do this, mom and dad. But this, some of you parents listening absolutely like would be just horrified to let this happen, especially with no cell phone and barely any money. And so, uh, you know, and things happen along, along the way that we had to figure out, but this is what made Carrie and I so fearless was, was having, was being able to do this on our own with no help. I, I agree with you hundred percent. And it makes me go, I did that so I can do this. And I think that, let me tell you rebel something is that when you face your fears and you get that experience, it's like a step ladder. You stand on that step to face the next thing. And then you stand on that step to face the next thing. And it is a progressive movement into being more brave. And let me tell you something. When I lost my hundred pounds, it took me a long time to believe that I was brave enough and that I could exercise. 
again, we don't think exercise has anything to do with weight loss. You guys know our stance on this, but for me, it was time for me to move into that. And it was very scary for me, just like I'm going to screw up. I'm never going to be as strong as Christy. I'm never going to look as good as Christy, but I stood on the step of, well, you lost a hundred pounds and you've kept it off, Carrie. I stood on that step and that helped me reach up to reach the next step of, well, you can take your life back with exercise, Carrie. You can transform your health that way as well. Do you know what I mean, Christy? Mm -hmm. So every progressive win, every, every time you face your fears, it's a step up. You can build on it to the next thing. A lot of you guys don't see all the time. So I try to let you in on my life. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram stories, I really try to let you in on my life. But a lot of you guys don't see all the times I fell on my face. All the times I'm developing new programs. Even right now as I speak, this whole list is full of things that I'm working on. And it's Um, And it's going to take a lot of faith for this to work. Now, of course, I put systems and safeguards in place. I cross my T's. I dot my I's. I mean, I I think it's going to work, but it's a real leap of faith. What if it doesn't work and I fall on my face again? You only see brave Christy. You only see Christy like, and and that's fine. I am brave, but there is some trepidation uh, stepping into these different programs. What if it fails? I've wasted a bunch of money. uh, And then my community laughs at me, da, 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 da. But you got to, you have to know that even I am stepping out in faith every, almost every day that I'm doing code red. I'm having faith that my programs are going to sell. I'm having faith that you're going to, you're going to like them and you're going to find hope and healing from them. And Joyce Meyer has a book called do it afraid. I would encourage you guys all to get that book. I don't know. I think you can go to her website or you can go to Amazon, do it afraid because you're going to feel the fear, but yep. what do you do? You just step, you push past it. Yep. Courage is having courage in is is moving forward in the face of fear i felt so ridiculous the very first time i showed up at the gym christy Mm. and i was like what am i doing here this is stupid carrie go home all these people are so intimidating it's such an intimidating space but you were with me and you held my hand and you were like you can do this and every little ridiculous thing i did you were like that was good even though i would know it wasn't good by the way you were like that is good that is good and you gave me the encouragement and the faith to keep moving and you guys that's what christy does when you join a 10 pound takedown it is scary but she walks in there with you she holds your hands our leaders our coaches Christy, the video, she holds your hands and she says, you're doing good. And you're like, all I did was put a Twinkie in the garbage. And Christy's like, that was the best Twinkie garbage thing I've ever seen. And you think it's amazing. You're so proud of yourself, Christy. A video popped up my phone of me two years ago doing uh, the ring jumps, holding the jumps and jumping. And you guys, I was coming off the ground this much. For those of you that are listening, I have, I don't know what, two inches. I'm sure I was barely jumping. I thought I was jumping 18 feet. The way Christy was acting, I was jumping like 18 feet in the air. Mm -hmm. Like I had a broad jump of like two feet. I was like, woo, look at those hops. I had no hops, guys. But Christy made me feel so encouraged that I kept going. So that's what it's like when you join us on this is that she stands with you and she walks into this fearful situation with you and she holds your hand and she makes you feel like you're jumping really high. Even though two years later, when you look at the video, you realize you weren't jumping very high at all, but you felt like it at the time. I love that. Thank you. Wow. That's you're so welcome. funny. I saw that <laughs> pop up on my stories, on my uh, memories too. And I was, I was like, like oh. I remember that. That's so yeah. funny. It was good. 10 pound takedown.com is the best place to get started with us. And we want you to remember false evidence appearing real. Amen. It's not real. It's yep. not real. Most of the stuff that you're working out and you're work, working up in your mind, you're just getting yourself worked into a tizzy for nothing, for nothing. It's time for you to start living a braver life. And maybe it starts with you getting your weight under control. Maybe mm-hmm. it starts with you getting your health under control because it does spill out into every area of your life when you're in good health. You, you tend to want to go back and finish that bachelor's degree. You tend to want to go ahead and, and do the other things in your life. Maybe you apply for a job. Maybe you start a, a skincare line or like you, you start selling Mary Kay or you start crocheting. I mean, you never know. Right. But all of it usually starts with getting your weight under control. I want to leave you guys with this. Ready? Mark 536. Everyone close your eyes and bow your I'm just <laughs> Don't be afraid, just believe. Ooh. Mark 536. Don't be afraid, just believe. Yeah, well, that's good. 
Guys, we enjoyed spending this time with you on Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. Tune in next week for another episode. Rewatch the episodes, share, like, review. You know, if you've got a loved one that you want to uh, share so- one of these subjects with it, it's always just best to send in the podcast because that, that episode, don't try to explain it yourself. It's just best if you let us explain it. It's going to come be more, it's going to be better coming from us. It's like when, when you tell your kids, eat your vegetables, but when Coach Christie tells your kids, eat your vegetables, <laughs> Katie Barr, the door they listen listen they're gonna listen to me just send them the episode uh, on cholesterol or whatever the heck you want them to learn let us do the work for you we sure appreciate each and every one of you we'll see you on the next rebel weight loss and lifestyle we'll also see you on the next 10 pound takedown take care everybody bye Thanks for listening to this episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. If you're not subscribed already, please be sure to do that right now. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you could do me a quick favor and rate and review this podcast. That would be just so helpful. Speaking of help, let me know if I can help you. Go to coderedlifestyle.com, check out my programs, and see what we can do for you. Until next time, Rebel On.